Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the Freeware 40th Anniversary Expansion Pack released by Got Friends on flightsim.to. I'll put a link in the video description. And it so far features two chapters and they are add-ons for the DHC2 Beaver and the Douglas DC3. And for the DHC2 we have a 35 inch bush wheel variant and various other additions like water spray effects, startup combustion smoke, and uh, custom snow physics on skis and stuff like that. And for the DC-3, they've added a new amphibious float variant. And I haven't done a video with the DC-3, though I have uh, flown it in a live stream. So this will be my first time doing a video with it. And they say they have custom flight model, weight limits, drag limits, and additional float and fuel tanks and stuff like that for the DC-3. So it's a bunch of features and we'll take a look at them in this video. So first of all, uh, I'll go with the bush wheel variant of the Beaver, and I will just go with the first delivery. Uh, actually, this Blackbird one looks nice. I'll go with the Blackbird delivery. All right, and we probably don't need all the fuel, but I'll put a little bit more in and we won't carry cargo. My plan is to uh, fly from two little airports in Alaska and uh, we are going to try and see some grizzly bears, but I doubt they're going to be there. So it's just a very short flight here, and let's try it out. So this is P-A-I-L, the airport, and this is the interior of the beaver, as it is. And so a nice cockpit. It's reminiscent of the Cessna 170 sort of style that we have with the Carinado Cessna 170 and I'm just looking for lights but I guess we have enough lights here okay so again this is the first time I'm flying this in here and right now at in this season we don't have that much daylight in Alaska so here's the Blackbird livery in the dim light that we have and let's see if we can find some polar bears Or grizzly bears, sorry. Okay. It certainly does take off shortly. Well, sort of a native habitat habitat for it. There's a little pad here. Chrome spinner, matte spinner. We'll just hide that tablet for now. No surprises about the way it handles. It is, it is handling like a beaver should. It's certainly no fighter jet. Okay, we are nearing the grizzly bear location. Now, in my experience, when the sim places the animals, they just don't pop up. It's like they wander away or something. Uh, whereas in mods, if they add the various animals, those tend to stay basically where they are, or at least they appear. So we'll see about these grizzly bears. I'd like more animals around. Anything that's more lively would be nice. Other things moving about, like uh, people have the ship traffic mod and all that. Now if you just want the features for one plane and not the other, uh, Godfriends separated the planes into different folders. So you can get the DC-3 add-on bits without the beaver ones or vice versa. It's not that big though, the mod. So... Probably okay to have it all. Oh, we passed the grizzly bear location. Well, I sure didn't see them just yet. All right, let's try and take a closer look. We can hear some ambient wildlife sounds. I think. I think that's what I'm hearing. Hey, the bears are close to this lake. Or uh, frozen over clearing lakeish thing.
Oh, yeah, there they are. We've got bears. And they're moving. Moving bears. They are on a trip. Okay, well, they appeared this time. That's nice. We'll give them one more pass. We'll try and see them uh, from the cockpit then. Ah, it uh, complains a bit. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get more flaps. But they should only render from a distance. Okay, uh, we're a little bit high. There they are. My co-pilot is completely uninterested. <laughs> uh. Okay, can I get them in my window in time? Alright, there we go. Fly by of the bears. They don't look too happy, but... They're on the move, so... Perhaps they'll be happy once they get to the end of their journey. Alright, speaking of which, let's head on to the airport that I wanted to land at. I feel like this is what the beaver was meant for. Looking at grizzly bears. <laughs> we should have wildlife tours, quite obviously. Alaskan bushwheel, alright. Though I'm not landing at the... Uh, dirt strips. I probably should have gone with dirt strips, but there weren't any convenient near the grizzly bears. The, these are the two closest airports to the grizzly bears, so maybe there's a different grizzly bear location to pick that would lead me to take off and land at the dirt strips, but turns out that we had pretty decent strips for the grizzly bear location. There were also some seagulls nearby, but I didn't really see any reason to go see the seagulls. I mean, I don't need to go to Alaska to see seagulls after all. So, yeah. <laughs> seagulls are not quite so interesting. The upholstery is exactly how I would expect it to be. We've got some better light on the plane at the moment. Not as shady as before. Is that chrome spinner, you can change it to a matte finish instead. They added a water spray effect to the amphibious variant, but I decided I wouldn't be trying the amphibious variant with the beaver since we are going to be flying that with the DC-3. There's the airstrip. And I didn't go through the startup procedure, so we didn't get to see the combustion smoke from that. Okay. Oh, ale dragger hops. Okay, I think we're firmly down now. Oop, don't flip on to the nose. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Well, uh, I, I think I'll just go... Uh, actually, the left looks a little bit flatter. I'll go over here. Whoop! Alright, so we did the flight with the beaver. Let us see about the DC-3. Okay, so here is the DC-3 amphibious variant. And it can go on land as well. And we may use that feature because I don't know if I can find a water runway to take off of. And we'll go with the Pure Metal Classic variant. We don't need full fuel. I guess we'll have people in the seats. And... Well, we're trying for Alaska here. There's a lot of clouds there. But I've only got water runways enabled here. And... I, I don't see many here in Alaska. Um, 
We need more water runways. And we don't want to get into where it's going to be dark, no matter what. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm not going to get water runways. So we're just going to uh, start on the regular runway and then eventually land in the water. No, we don't want seagulls. But there's some more grizzly bears over here and over here. Now that's probably enough asphalt. Cape Sarachev. King Cove sounds interesting. I mean, a cove should have a water. We should be able to land in the water right here, right? There's a marina and everything. Uh, actually, yeah. Let's see. How far a flight is that? That's not too bad. We'll take a look at some of these other locations. False Pass. Cold Bay. And then PAVC. King Cove. And we'll try and land in the cove. Okay, so here we are with the DC-3. This is the interior. This is the first time I'm displaying it on the YouTube channel. And there is a cold and dark start switch here. Somebody had asked about the cold and dark start during a uh, live stream, and I managed to start it. But on subsequent attempts, uh, it's been a little bit finicky. And there is a checklist here. And the checklist, the issue is that with starting the engine, it has weight on the starter and mesh, and you have to wait for it. But there's no clear indication how long you have to wait. I've looked at the dials and everything. There's The starter is this energized engines, and then there's the mesh there, and then you have the primer. Uh, compared to the Boeing 247, it's sort of a different order. Normally you have the primer first, but I'm not sure. Hopefully there will be videos on how to start DC-3 properly, but... Uh, so far, it's been inconsistent for me, so it is a matter of timing, and that was true of the Boeing 247 as well. Getting the timing right on the start was a bit of a trick. So, yep. One thing I've noticed is that we have a water rudder switch here, where I think the ground power used to be. So that's an interesting difference. But we better take off now before we run out of runway. go and we have cleared the trees a little bit of a argument there from the plane we've got 28 knot wind against us that's a headwind I mean that's fine for taking off and everything but compared to our current speed it's quite a bit so there's the floats and here's the landing here coming up it only now occurs to me that the cove that we're trying to land in might be iced over. <laughs> but this is water. There's supposed to be water over here. In fact, the ocean. And it's just a bunch of ice right now. I'm not sure that feels like we have super drag with the floats, though. I think we probably would have been able to take off faster without them. So uh, we really did need all of that airstrip. And I think the DC-3 could do it much quicker without the floats. So I'm thinking that there's extra drag on this variant. But I'd have to do a closer test to be sure of that. Well, here it's all I see, but then uh, along the coast up ahead it's not. So who knows, maybe the cove will be alright. Seems to be proximity to the higher terrain. I don't know. The ground textures around here don't seem to be don't seem to have been updated in a while. We're in the Aleutian Islands. Hopefully they can get a nice little snapshot sometime. But the clouds are baked into the ground textures you can sort of see. Not too sure about the vibration on this box thing. Uh, the box is vibrating quite a bit, but the dial inside isn't. <laughs> this area is better. I don't know why we had a sort of rough patch of bad textures before, but this is sort of nice. That area there is what I'm talking about. That's not so nice. This side is better by comparison. 
Well, the weather is not great. Hopefully we can spot the grizzly bears. I don't think there are clouds at lower levels. It's just up here. We do have mountains in front of us, so we have to be careful. It's got to be a bit harder to see the grizzly bears in here. This is a larger plane to maneuver. And we seem to need to get pretty close to them in order to see them. Well, the landscape is much more interesting around here. We got severe mountains in the distance. And some nice features around. Okay, well, it's a little bit hard to figure out exactly where we're supposed to be with this. We'll try just going low and as slow as I feel safe, and we will see. Uh, it's just getting too bad around here. I think mostly I just see some trees. Oh, there they are. Oh gosh. We, we passed them. Uh, I hope you caught them. <laughs> I don't know if I can find them again very easily. They're going sort of slow. Here's where the drag of the floats is gonna be interesting. trying to see bears like this. There they are. Alright. I, I don't think I can get an in-cockpit view of them though. I think we'll just proceed on to the next location. I am I'm satisfied. Don't know if we're gonna be able to see these uh, locations that I've mapped out, but we'll try. Exterior look in the weather, and yeah, the body looking a bit frosty again. I don't think it's actually frosty. I think it's just reflecting the clouds. Water's water though, not iced over. Okay, so this is this fake pass location P A K F some little settlement over here That's a road. This is the runway. Alright, on to the next stop. Ah, pretty detailed mesh around here. We've got a fairly significant mountain over there. Well, landscape has gotten more dramatic for this leg of the journey. Okay, we see PACD there. We'll just fly over it. That's a fairly nice runway there. But that is not where we want to land. We want to make a water landing. as dangerous as that might potentially be. We want to test out these floats. So I'll try to land in that little bay, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe, maybe south of where the Cove Harbor is will be defrosted. I don't think the actual bay, the upper part of that bay is going to be defrosted. Okay, yeah, uh, this cove is 
iced over here. Very much so. We'll just uh, head south and see how far we need to go to get some water. Looks pretty far though. I think I see some water over there. I mean, uh, this looks especially watery. But I see the sun shining on some over there. Well, our main thing is to test the landing, not to get to it in any particular location. Uh, maybe over there would be better. There seems to be an end to the ice pack there. I don't know. Does this make the DC-3 the fastest flying boat or amphibious airplane in the game right now? I think so. Oh uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, because I think it's faster than the Spruce Goose as well. I can't think of a faster flying boat. This thing can go potentially 200 knots, at least 150 pretty consistently. Well, I had a few hops there too. But we are in the water and is successfully being a amphibious vehicle. My water rudder is turning me. Though, I don't think those little things are actually in the water. But, I mean, I guess my own rudder might be actually doing most of the turning right now. I'm not sure. So, okay, but it works. It certainly works. So, there you have it. The Got Friends Enhancement Pack or Add-on Expansion to the 40th Anniversary Edition. And we will look forward to what they offer in the next chapters of this expansion. Jato, apparently, for the DC-3, so that's a whole other thing. But for now, as I sort of skirt along the water here, acting like a boat, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.